Hi and welcome everyone, this is the Hobo Prepper. I am Friar Tuck. I am trying to articulate this argument because I think it's an important argument that needs to be made because things are coming down the road between high inflation, raising interest rates, uh, job loss, uh, health issues, all these different things uh, could lead you to be homeless. And so you got two choices. Either you can spend everything it is that you have uh, to uh, sell everything it is that you can sell to be able to keep a roof over your head, to be able to continue to pay your mortgage, to be able to pay your rent, to be able to pay to live with someone or, or to live by yourself and have your independence. Okay. Or, uh, or excuse me, then what happens is after you run out and you exhaust all those funds. So it may take six months before that happens. And you're hoping that in that six month period of time that something will change to give you a break so that you can uh, so so that you can survive and the truth is is once you start down that that downhill spiral there is no there is no safety net that's going to help you until you reach bottom and bottom is being homeless okay uh it happens to the best of us uh because what's going to happen after you spend all your money you sell all your stuff is you're going to go live with friends and family and you're gonna you're gonna exhaust those relationships, but you know there's there's and you think oh well that should be fine you know I, I'll get a job I'll get up on my feet things will be great so on and so forth and you think that that's actually what'll happen but that's not necessarily what happens. Um, <clears throat> what generally happens is that you you the loss of of things the the loss of your independence the loss of your uh, of your stuff. Uh, the, the loss of everything that you're suffering, it's going to take a psychological toll on you. It's going to send you into depression. It's going to make it very hard for you to look for work. I mean, just for example, losing my business, you have no idea the amount of emotional, uh, the emotional trauma, I guess you could call it, that I, that I deal with. Because once you own a business and then you lose it, not through any fault of your own, but because, um, because of, poor politicians making shitty decisions i mean it, it, it takes a toll on you do you actually want to go back and work for somebody you've spent so long working for yourself that's really really hard to swallow your pride and to go do that and you know most people can um me i i struggle to do it because you know i learned that i can make more money working on my own than i could ever working for someone else and working for someone else I, i'm a beggar and at that point i'm relying on them to be able to provide me enough work and well you know if they can't provide me enough work it's no sweat off their brow to let me go and you know at least keep their their income and and keep their standard of living while they get to you know in a way play yo-yo with my life and that's that's part of the reason why i struggle even going to go find a, a, an actual job i mean other than my background issue um which is really what forced me to be self-employed to be to begin with is you know it, it, it's the psychological aspect and and I still struggle with this every single day and I mean it's been over a year since I lost my business I had it for six years so it's going to take me some time to get over it and I mean I've reached a few points where it's like okay okay I'm ready to go get a job but then I go and work for somebody like shift smart and the way that they treat me I'm like no because you know as a business owner you learn self-respect you learn how to you know uh, you learn that you are a, a dignified human being versus you know what an employee gets treated like and so therefore it causes me to recoil and go back in my shell and be like i'm not so sure i want to go work for someone again not unless i'm working for me doing a doing like a subcontract job i mean there are things that just there's a psychological aspect and if you're employed and you have a job uh, and then you lose your job, especially if you spent quite a few years there and it's not like you did anything. It's just, well, they need to keep their, their comfort and their, their cost of living and everything else like that. They've got to make sure to cover that. And at the end of the day, well, they just, they just don't have, they have to choose between their comfort and keeping you and they're going to choose their comfort over keeping you every day of the week. And that when, when you get rejected on that level, it's, it's, kind of hard to recover from that uh in in any form or fashion and so you know once you've exhausted everything and you've gone and you've stayed with friends and family and you've you've destroyed those relationships because you know you're dealing with your own mental issues of of the whole loss of everything and kind of how it makes you feel like less than a less than a man less than a human you, you don't feel like a dignified human being anymore because you've lost your independence 
um, then you end up out here. And you end out here with absolutely nothing. Nothing to to go on, nothing to buy your own food. You know, you'll be lucky to walk out with 10 bucks in your pocket. You know, and at the end of the day, if you already know that you're going to be there or that your chance of being there is extremely high, why would you waste all that money throwing good money after bad, knowing full well that the end result is rock bottom and becoming homeless? Okay. And, you know, that's, that's something that I've had to grapple with. And, you know, that was something I, I made a decision months ago. Actually, it's been, it was like in March or April of this year, I made a decision that I was going to go homeless. Uh, I, I had already decided it. That's why I started this channel, uh, because I, I knew that that was on the horizon. So what I did is I made sure to get the gear that I needed to be able to allow me to go do what I wanted to do, which is to come out, be homeless, be comfortable, and still keep my dignity. And the thing is, mentally, I don't have to go through all this stuff of destroying my friends and my family and my relationships and spending all that money. And I mean, I'm still dealing with the psychological aspect of losing my business and just, you know, all the different things that I had to deal with there. But at the end of the day, I'm in a better position because I made sure to prepare for what I knew was coming instead of trying to avoid it by throwing money at a problem that money wasn't going to fix. Um, and with what's coming uh, over the next few months, money can't fix this problem. The, the problem is the money um, because it has been overprinted, overinflated, uh, mismanaged, and just completely bastardized over, over time. And so, you know, you, you as the individual get to pay the consequences for another individual's actions. And, you know, because you're paying those consequences, you, you don't really get much of a say in it as much as you, you'd like to think that you do. And, so why have I become, why, why did I choose to become homeless? Well, one, I've been institutionalized. I've been out here so many times. I knew it was coming. I decided, you know what, let me, let me actually get myself prepared. And like I said, I bought the gear that I wanted to buy. And I know that eventually I will get back up on my feet. Eventually things will go good. But I have to work out my own issues first. And then secondly, I have to get myself in a place, uh, in an environment that is healthy and happy for me. And, you know, for each person, it's different. You know, here, what made the environment happy and healthy is I got one good friend and I got one guy that has me go do runs for him. And I had a girlfriend that just made me feel special. And if she didn't even realize it, that if she would have stayed with me, uh, I, I probably would have, uh, it, it would have changed kind of how I am uh, or how I was going to have my end result because my end result is I'm going to be traveling until either I make enough money off of all the different platforms that I'm trying to monetize such as you know getting a thousand subscribers 4,000 watch hours so I can get ad revenue off of YouTube uh, getting people to come over to my Patreon and to sponsor me that way or people that, that purchase gear through my affiliate links you know those are those are different ways in which I uh, you know I can I can pull myself off the streets. But the thing is, is I got to play the long game. And so many people are impatient that they want to play the short game. I need to go get a job. Like if I got a job, I could be off the streets in six weeks. It takes me two to three paychecks and I have enough. But see, I'm single, which means I can go into a roommate situation, which is going to cost me about six, seven hundred dollars a month. You know, and I don't know if I want to go into a roommate situation because it seems like the older people get that are still in roommate situations, the slobbier they get. And I don't like living with slobs. I mean, you know, it's, it's bad enough dealing with my own issues, but then to have to like live in a place that just makes me not want to do anything. I mean, that's, that sucks, but you know, I came out here with a plan and my plan was, this is how I plan on getting myself off the streets. Now, social media and monetizing it, that's one thing. That's one avenue. Um, one of the things that I'm realizing is that as being a nomad, yeah, it's great. I'm trying to find that place where I fit in, where 
uh, where I feel like it's home. Because I mean, that's what San Francisco did to me. I think that was a big lesson for me is when I got there, it was it was home. I, I loved it. There was I, there was so much stuff to do. You couldn't do it all in a lifetime. There was so much pretty things to see. You could take a day off and you didn't have to spend any money and you could still go have a good time. And, you know, being able to find a place like that where I'm like, man, this feels like home because, uh, you know, I, I I like the environment. I like the city. Uh, it's hustling and bustling and there's there's quite a bit of opportunities. Uh, then, you know, that's that's where I'm going to settle down. But I, I think I, I'm kind of moving towards two directions. Now, from what I've read, uh, the 423rd contact note for those of you that are uh, that are following the Meyer material. It talks about how the Figu Center, uh, the 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 U.S. Figu Center, should be set somewhere in uh, in Arizona, and it's been it's been set there and planned there for quite some time. Uh, you you got to read the contact note to get the full context of what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I'm considering going to Arizona. Maybe even if I if I can get uh, financially rolling as good as I need to, to, to do. Maybe I can even buy me some property there, bug out on that property and just, and keep going. But also I have other skills that I want to use, uh, to freelance myself around so that I can find work so that I can, uh, so that I can support myself outside of social media, outside of YouTube and Patreon and Amazon's affiliate links and stuff like that. I, I want to be able to support myself outside of that and have both incomes complement the other because I mean I, I like to work I, I, I enjoy working but I prefer again working for myself and you know when it when it comes to making this choice I, I made this choice because again I was willing to play the long game uh, you, you've got to play the long game if you're ever going to get off the streets because I was chronically homeless for for most of the last 20 years. I mean, I've spent probably a total of seven to eight years total uh, over the years on the streets, uh, whether it be in different states, in different cities, in different places, uh, sometimes going homeless in the same city a couple of times. Um, you know, I have I've been through this uh, enough to know that if you and what really got me off of the streets and kept me off for long periods of time was stability was starting my own business was working for me and and being able to to create a schedule that worked around my mental health issues and that worked great for me for years i mean i had i had a couple of i had one fall on my face uh when with uh uh, with, with my janitorial business that I had to go outside, but out of six years, one time outside, maybe twice tops. I mean, that's some, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. I mean, I did a, I, I think I did a pretty good job, but the thing is, is it, it, it took me taking the time to put myself back together to, uh, you know, coming across the Meyer material did a lot to, uh, help me, help me straighten out my mind and the way that I see the world. And it, and just getting that stability, that mental stability, that emotional stability, and then the financial stability will come. But without being able to get those in order, you're, you're never really going to fully get off the streets. You'll be back out here soon because you, one, you haven't learned your lesson and two, you haven't corrected the things that, that put you out here and kept you out here for the times that you're out here, which is again, your, your mental and your emotional stability, because those are going to be the areas where you're going to take the biggest toll. Okay. And because I was able to put myself together, I can come out here. And even though I'm still dealing with a little bit of depression because of being outside and, you know, I want to be inside and not have to deal with the 20 degree temperatures this week. And I, I want to be able to have a job or something to go to, to do some work and da, 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 da. I mean, I want all those things, but at the end of the day, I'm not in the right place to have those things, you know? And so, you know, while I'm working on myself and while I'm putting myself back together, these, uh, I am working also towards that goal. And this is why I say, if you're going to, if you're going to make a choice to, to be homeless, you got to play the long game. You, you got to make sure that you can, that you've got a plan. And even if that plan changes over time, 
you've got to have a plan and you've got to have an end goal, an end result that you're looking to have. You know, my end result is just to be able to have uh, enough funds coming in so that I could enjoy maybe a roof over my head and uh, and enough work coming in to where I, I can enjoy, you know, some of the nice amenities of life, such as going out to eat uh, or going out on a date or being able to help somebody else that's in need. Okay. And so how, you know, figuring out how you're going to reach that goal and having realistic expectations and being realistic about it is going to be the difference between your success and your failure. And, you know, again, if you already know that, that you're going to hit rock bottom, if you already know that it's going to spiral, why not save your money? Why not get the right gear and then keep the rest of your money off to the side to support you while you come out here? Because in some ways it's more expensive. In other ways, it's less expensive. It just depends upon how much you're willing to swallow your pride. You know, are you willing to go get free clothes or do you want to buy your own clothes? Are you willing to go stand in the soup line or do you need to go buy your own food? Um, are you are you willing to uh, to go and get spotty work while you sit there and work on yourself? Or do you need to just have constant work and, you know, you just need to be off the streets? And, you know, the, the sense of entitlement, the, the pride and the ego are going to be the biggest things that keep you down here uh, in, in this situation. So, guys, I hope that this helps and you guys know how to help the channel. I need like, subscribe, shares, uh, come subscribe to my Patreon. And every day that I release a video, uh, it... Uh, you you'll get an email with the with the video release and you get to see it three days before anybody does here on youtube plus content that doesn't even make it to youtube uh and you know my affiliate links and the tip jar of course uh you know you uh, you've got cash app and pay uh paypal if you want to use those but hey guys uh, i would love to hear your feedback and i would love to hear what you guys think and uh you know tell me if i articulated this well i, I would really like to know so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video